Good day to all. Welcome to Straight Talk with Greg Middleton. My name is Alexandra. With this introduction, here is Greg. Good day to everyone and welcome to my show Straight Talk. Today I have a returning guest who is Donald Colbert, a friend of mine. He's an associate minister at New Macedonia uh, Missionary Baptist Church right here in Pasadena area. He's a fervent believer in Christ Jesus, and as I said, he's a friend of mine. I asked Donald to come back because he has this mission that the Lord has put on him to deal with children, and that's one of my passions also. So today we're going to keep our focus upon the children. Welcome to our show again, Donald. All right, my brother. All good right. being back. Good, 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 good. Now, Donald, it's, this is particularly of interest to me because we come in this world rather innocently and seem like the world just corrupts us. <laughs> so our mission is how do we teach children about God? Well, Greg, funny you should ask that because mm -hmm. let me say it like this. Uh, I'm 68. Mm -hmm. So 68 years ago, that question didn't need to be asked. Right. Because we, my parents knew, my mother knew how mm -hmm. to introduce me mm -hmm. to Christ and all my brothers and sisters. Okay. So I believe that we need to probably get back to some of the old ways. Not saying that we have mm -hmm. to go all the way back, but the Bible does say, find ye the old path. And when mm -hmm. you find it, walk therein. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. and you know, there are a lot of things that our parents did. Right. And we didn't, it wasn't completely what we thought it should be because there are no rules to raising children. Right. But there are some that apply to God that I think have to be strictly adhered to. Mm -hmm. And that's to introduce them to God when they're young. What's the scripture that says, uh, train a child as they're young? It said, train up a child in the way that he should go, Proverbs. Mm -hmm. It said, when, he old, when he's old or she, uh, mm -hmm. they won't depart. You know, let's relate this back to, in fact, you said, let's go back to old school. <coughs> so how did you learn all of this about God? Like you said, your parents kind of enforced that upon you, right? Right. We had to get up every Sunday morning mm -hmm. and go to, first of all, Sunday school. Mm -hmm. Down south, where I'm from, Louisiana, mm -hmm. we didn't have every Sunday. Church wasn't every Sunday. Okay. Sunday school was every Sunday. Oh. Church was every, for us, it was every second and fourth Sunday. Mm -hmm. And so we, that's the way we did it. Every second and fourth Sunday, we were there all day. Mm -hmm. BTU, mm -hmm. Junior, Usher, Boy, Choir, all of that. Right. Well, but with that in mind, we're in a different era now. Absolutely. A different world. Absolutely. And I don't see children rushing to the church. So that seems to be somewhat of a problem. I think that's our hurdle to get them to know who God is. How do you get to know God if, if there's no mm -hmm. facility like the church? You know what? Like I said, we had church mm -hmm. every second and fourth Sunday. Mm -hmm. So that means there's something had to fill the gap. Mm -hmm. And that something was home. Okay. Okay, and that brings me back to what I said, but I was saying previously. For years, my focus has been on the family, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and I had started with just the African-American family, but I'm, mm -hmm. as, as I talk to a lot of my friends, mm -hmm. I find that all ethnic groups are going through the same thing of course, with of the course. lack of spirit, spirituality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I believe that it starts at home. Mm -hmm. I remember on Sundays, we used to, my mother used to cook before we went to church. Right. And then... And when we returned home, everybody sat at the table, mm -hmm. period, mm -hmm. period. Mm -hmm. right. You sat at the table and you ate. Mm -hmm. And everybody discussed what was, nest what was discussed. We discussed what was happening in the sermon, mm -hmm. what we learned in Sunday school. Mm -hmm. And if we, you know, if we were wrong, my mother would correct us. Mm -hmm. And I think that that, I know for a fact that that had a profound effect on me. Mm -hmm. Because that's the way I raised my children. Right. Yeah, and that brings me to the point, too, because... What I'm sensing here, it might just be my imagination. It just seemed like the church as an establishment, and it might be just in our community, is, is diminishing. And, and I don't think it's just COVID related. You know, I think COVID happened, which now people don't feel as comfortable coming back out in the establishment, in the churches. And now they've gotten convenient where they can just stay at home and watch it on Zoom or, or watch it on television. So you're saying that that is what? I think that's impacting our, our, our faith. Our spirit. Do you? I think in a way it's shifting mm 
Mm -hmm. Because God is a dispensational God. Okay. He has not always dealt with us like he deals with us now, like mm -hmm. he's dealing with us now. Mm -hmm. If you remember, uh, there was innocence in the garden. That's right. the first dispensation right. and how he dealt with Adam and Eve. Mm -hmm. And then we moved from there to the promise. Right. I mean, you know, uh, uh, after Adam and Eve took the fall, we mm -hmm. moved to the fall and then we moved to the promise. Right. But each time, now we're dealing in a dispensation of grace. Mm -hmm. And so within this dispensation, I think that we, he's leaving it to us to be stewards over what we learned in the past and mm -hmm. what the spiritual awareness that we have. Mm -hmm. And we've not been good stewards. Right. We've not been good stewards. Right. And you mentioned to me about the children. Right. That's my biggest concern with us. And it's not necessarily the abortions, mm -hmm. but it's what are we doing with the children that are right. here now? Right. What are we doing now? And oh, in yeah. In fact, that's where I want to keep our focus because I tend to dance around, but I want to stay right here with the children because my concern is if we don't teach them about God, it just don't pop in their head. They're going to struggle. Right. If we don't bring them into the fold early, uh, mm -hmm. show them this mm -hmm. path, this narrow path, right. this gate, mm -hmm. this narrow gate mm -hmm. early, mm -hmm. then it's going to be hard for them. It's going to be a hard for them to find it. It's going to be a real challenge. Right. Whereas we can make easy and hopefully successful their path mm -hmm. by introducing them to Christ at an early age. Right. And my thing is that I remember in the, in the Romans, the, the main chapter of Rome that, mm -hmm. Romans that we should be interested in is okay. Romans 10. 9 and 10. Mm -hmm. But in that chapter, in the first verse, Paul said, my brothers, my brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God mm -hmm. is that you might be saved. And he went on to say, I bear you record that you have a zeal of God, mm -hmm. but it's not according to knowledge. Mm -hmm. He said, you have gone about trying to establish your own righteousness and you have forsaken the righteousness of God. And that's where we are now. Mm -hmm. We have gone, I, I bear these people record. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of these televangelists and stuff. They have a zeal of God, mm -hmm. but it's not according to righteousness. It's not right. according to the knowledge, the true knowledge of God, mm -hmm. because the true knowledge of God tells us that we are stewards over our children, mm -hmm. that we are what? Stewards of each other, that we sh I should love you, mm -hmm. my neighbor, mm -hmm. as I love myself. I hear you. That's what he says. And I think that that's where we dropped the ball with the children. We forgot our stewardship of our children. Right. Now, excuse me, because this is on me. I actually, before we start this, let's call the Holy Spirit into this oh, studio. Okay. So you mind praying right in the middle of our conversation? <laughs> Eternal God, we thank you now for this day. We thank you, Father, for the opportunity to bear witness to who you are. Mm. We thank you for the privilege of bearing witness to who your son is. We thank you now for the invoking of the presence of the Holy Spirit within this proceeding. I thank you now, Lord, and then I ask you to forgive me my sins, cleanse me my unrighteousness so that my prayer might be heard, mm -hmm. my petition granted, and all the praises that are, uh, are sent up today, Father, would be acceptable, uh, acceptable sent in your nostrils. Thank you now. Give Greg and myself clarity. Give us the utterance that you want us to have, Lord, so that we can convey a message so that a seed can be planted. Thank and you. somebody will bring some water and pour the water on it, Father. And in the end, you will get the increase. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Now, what that dawned on me is that the statement that Christ says, Suffer not the little children to come unto me. Suffer little children to come unto me. To come unto me. Right. And forbid them not. Ah, okay. Thank you. for Yeah. yeah. No. Let's no. break that down a little bit, because the way I look at this world, I mean, you have so much abuse of children. You have uh, unwed people trying to raise children. You have unfit people trying to raise children. Now, God sends us down here, our souls, correct? Absolutely. We don't pick that. God does no, that. We don't make that decisions. I mean, God needs <clears throat> these people who are so unfit. But it's God's duty to watch over his souls, right? Right. Yeah. So what, what dawned on me, though, like I said, all these children are going through all this abuse and everything like that. But don't we have a duty, us, at least the body of God, to somehow be their protectors, us in the body of God? Now, the ones who are not into God, they, they don't do this anyway. Absolutely. God, children are a gift. Right. God said, blessed is the man whose quiver is what? Full mm -hmm. with them. Mm -hmm. And so once he gives them to us, it's... As a believer, mm -hmm. okay, now now those that are not believers, right. I don't know, but as 
parents, period. Mm -hmm. It is incumbent upon us to take care of our children and raise them in a fashion which will lead, which, which will guide them in the path of being good and productive citizens. Right. As believers now, mm -hmm. we are admonished to take them and introduce them to Christ, mm -hmm. the teachings of Christ. Mm -hmm. And then when they're old, the Bible said they will not depart from those ways. Mm -hmm. And that's what mm -hmm. we've dropped the ball. There's no more right. sitting around the dinner table right. There, right. on any day. Right. right. On any day. Right. Right. And then don't don't if you tell a child, oh, don't take that McDonald's in your room. Mm -hmm. Oh, mm -hmm. man, you got to fight. Well, here's the main fight. Take that phone off your ear. Oh, brother. Not a, and, and out of your hand. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, so uh, they're so, so focused on this social media world that how can we squeeze God into their world with them? Because I believe that we have gone in the direction of trying to be friends. Okay. And not really wanting our kids to dislike us when in essence, mm -hmm. the harder you are on them, the better they are towards you. Spare the rod. Yeah, they'll love you. I, I, I know for a fact, mm -hmm. because I love my mother with all my heart. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. trust me, brother, mm -hmm. she didn't spare no rod mm -hmm. or anything else she could pick up and hit you with. Right. But I think with, there's a fear of parents now maybe not being friends with their children mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. afraid their children are not going to like them, but mm -hmm. they will. What did Christ say? He said, I didn't come here to be your friend. I didn't come here uh, as, uh, to make peace. I come here to with a sword, didn't he? Right. Something like that. That's what he said. Uh, but, you know, he didn't. And that's what I told my children. Mm -hmm. you're, not, you're not trying to make friends, but you're trying to win souls. Right, right. You know, you go to school to learn, not mm -hmm. to make friends. Right. And I said, if you make a friend mm -hmm. in the process of getting your education, then fine. Mm -hmm. That's fine. And I believe that that's the way, if we proceed that way with Christ and the, the works of the Spirit, mm -hmm. I think that we'll be fine. Right. Uh, and we have to go back to this old way with the children. Mm -hmm. We have to be the example that the children, whatever we want them to be, mm -hmm. we have to be that. Of course. Of we course. have to be that. Be the example right. you want them to see. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what has happened over the past few years. We've stopped being the example right. since 1968. When everybody was thrown into a disarray over the death of, uh, of Dr. King, mm -hmm. our families, mm -hmm. the African-American families, seemed like we have become less right. spiritual. Right. Yeah. And then COVID came mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. you know, really, uh, with the, we as the older people, mm -hmm. you know, I'm 68 now, and so mm -hmm. we've fallen into the, the Zoom right. meetings. We've right. fallen into the phone meetings, mm -hmm. and we don't want to go and what? As Hebrew said, right. forsake not to assemble yourselves right. mm -hmm. as in the manner of some. And you, you said something a moment ago, like a, about becoming the example. And uh, how many people, like, I used to smoke many years ago, but I used to smoke, and now when we see our kids, they say, don't smoke, and yet you have a cigarette in your mouth. Right. You know, so we're telling the kids, don't do what we do, and here we are doing what we tell them not to do. Right. And we, we have. Uh, our single focus mm -hmm. now has to be on saving mm -hmm. the next generation of our children. Right. It has to be. It has to be. It has I to be. Agree with and you, I, I, I'm, I'm saying this by myself because mm -hmm. I got two grandkids. Mm -hmm. Actually, I got with my second wife, she got five. So seven. Mm -hmm. Seven mm -hmm. grandkids. Mm -hmm. And we have to start having weekly meetings, mm -hmm. not necessarily teaching the scripture, but right. actually sitting down together eating. Right. And in the process of doing that, having the family meetings, we will, the spirit of the Lord, mm -hmm. which we just right. prayed for right. him to be here, right. he will come in the midst mm -hmm. and then he will guide everything mm -hmm. to where he wants it to be. But we have to be there. We have to set this up. God is not going to do, he will do everything, but right. he's relying on us. Mm -hmm. We're his hands, we're his eyes, mm -hmm. we're his ears, we're his mouth, we're his feet. Tell me this. In fact, um, the reason I wanted you on this show because off camera we were talking about how God has sent a kind of mission upon you. So this children right. thing is a mission that you feel coming from the Lord. Have you been able to express that verbally in your own mind, what God may be calling you to do? Have you at yeah. all conceptually? Well, I believe that he's, I've put, I'm putting together now a series okay. of, of um, a series of lessons okay. where I'm trying to instruct parents. Mm-hmm on how to reach the children, because Ooh. I'm not the one. Okay. 
Okay, just like you and I have had this conversation mm -hmm. before, mm -hmm. where David went to, David was lying in his bed asleep one mm -hmm. night. Mm -hmm. Not asleep, but just lying there, right. meditating. Mm -hmm. He said that, oh, King David. Mm -hmm. And he said that, you know, I feel bad, and I'm paraphrasing now, right, right. that the Lord, the Ark of the Covenant rests in a tent while I rest in a, you know, a luxurious, luxurious right. home. And he said, I'm going to build God a temple for the Ark. Mm -hmm. And he called Nathan in, the prophet, right, who right. served under David at that mm -hmm. time, you know, after Samuel had left. And he came in and said, oh, okay, David, do whatever's in your heart to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, you mm -hmm. know, that night, mm -hmm. God came to Nathan and told him, Nathan, David can't do this. Right. Because David is a man of war. Mm -hmm. He got blood on his hands. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so with that being said, I'm saying that there are some things that I can't do directly for the children. Right. I'll have to, uh, my, my mission, I believe, after mm -hmm. talking to you last night right, and looking right. at your, uh, mm -hmm. your presentation to me, mm -hmm. it is to try and facilitate the parents with mm -hmm. the wherewithal and the need to get back to the way things used to be right. in terms of our spirituality. Because the most gains, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, no, no. The no. most gains were made right. when, we were don't, when we were in that mode. Right. Not many gains. Look at what we're doing now. Everything is being lost. Not just for the African American people, but mm -hmm. for American people. Period. Period. The world, as yeah, a matter of fact. Because go. But on. You, you had. Uh, I mean, I like the angle because first of all, you can't just go in somebody's house and teach your children. No, you can't. So <laughs> you have to go to the teachers of the children. You have to go to, to them. prepare them. So that's that, that would be like basic one on one. Yes, right. And so your teaching has to be to the parents to teach their children. Right. And as part of this presentation, you know, okay. I, I, last night, okay. the Lord impressed upon me to use Deuteronomy, okay. one, the, the scripture six and one. Okay. He said, we've been too long on this plateau. Mm -hmm. That's what he's told. That's mm -hmm. what Moses told him. Okay. He said, we got to move on up a little higher. Mm. We've been too long on the plateau of the achievements of Dr. King. Mm -hmm. And the achievements of John Kennedy, the right. achievements of Robert Kennedy, the right. achievements of Roosevelt. Mm -hmm. We've been too long, and so, quote, Lincoln, mm -hmm. unquote, mm -hmm. those achievements. So mm -hmm. we have to move on past this right. plateau. We right. have to move up a little bit higher. Right. And the only way we're going to do that is we get back to raising the level of spirituality in mm -hmm. this country. Mm -hmm. I mean real spirituality. I don't mean somebody standing on TV right. telling you to do this right. and telling you to do that. Mm -hmm. Oh, I realize abortion is bad, mm -hmm. but I also realize that letting children starve is bad. Right. I also realize that right. putting children in rooms with, 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 with lead paint is mm -hmm. bad. Mm -hmm. It's bad. Mm -hmm. So Jesus said, now how can you, this is what he said to the disciples when mm -hmm. he was telling him about love, when he was speaking to them about love. Right, right. And he talked to them about God. Mm -hmm. How can you say you love God whom mm -hmm. you've never seen and you hate your brother who you see every day? Exactly. How can they say that they're so concerned about the unborn children mm -hmm. when the children come over here swimming across, man, it brings water to my eyes, trying to get into a country mm -hmm. so they can eat. Right. The parents are trying to bring them here so right. they can feed them. Mm -hmm. But we turn them away. Mm -hmm. We turn mm -hmm. children away. Mm-hmm. I remember I was talking. I was talking to a friend of mine. And he said, "Yeah, my mother. This guy's mother mm -hmm. said, yeah, they shouldn't.' And when this little girl drowned, her dad brought her over to one side of mm -hmm. the Rio Grande, mm -hmm. and he swam back to get their right. personal items. Okay. And she jumped in, thinking that her dad had left her, and mm -hmm. she drowned. He drowned on his way back to save his God. daughter. Mm -hmm. And the woman said, "Oh, she. They shouldn't have been trying to come over here. No way." What kind of posture is that to take? Yeah. That's pretty much the posture of the United States. Right. Now. It is. It is. It and, is. Of, and like I say, it's not just black folk. Right. But Jesus said, mm -hmm. no, God said in the book of Deuteronomy, let's move off of this mm -hmm. plateau. Mm -hmm. And then he went, when he he going down into that scripture, he said, when you, I think it's a seven, six mm -hmm. and seven, mm -hmm. that's six and one, where he said mm -hmm. move off the plateau. But mm -hmm. Deuteronomy six and seven, I believe, says that we need to, when we sit down at our dinner tables, mm -hmm. Share the testimonies to our children right. and our children's children and their children, mm -hmm. the testimonies of God. Right. And that's what we're not doing anymore. Mm -hmm. We're not sharing these testimonies. And then he said, when you walk with your son, when you walk with your daughter, mm -hmm. have meaningful conversation. Right. That's why God told us, man. He said, every, you'll have to account for every idle word mm -hmm. and deed. The things that you're saying reminds me, like I said, the way we grew up. Absolutely. Old school. Absolutely. A, a lot of us, 
we didn't have an option not to do what our folks said. So are we literally <laughs> dropping the ball in this day and age by trying to be friends, like you said, with our children rather than being firmer? Giving them options. Right. We're uh, giving them too many options. I know. I We're know. just giving. And the Bible says in Ephesians 6, okay. dealing with the children, his fathers, do not what, mm -hmm. provoke your children to wrath. Right. That's what he said, Ephesians 6 and 6, I believe it was, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 6 and 9 to 6 and mm -hmm. 6. But my thing is this, if you don't teach a child, right. rear them in the fear and admonition of, the God, of God, what mm -hmm. are you doing? Right, right. You are provoking them to wrath because without direction, right. children left to raise themselves, mm -hmm. uh, it's not going to be anything well, but can't. chaos. Yeah, they can't. They, they can't. can't do it. Mm -hmm. And so we have to try to get to the parents. Mm -hmm. We have to try to instruct the parents and how to give their children the tools in which they'll need. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to back this up because like my mind kind of thinks methodically. Like I said, what's first base? What's second base? What third base? So in your approach to the children, like you said, we have to get to the parents. Absolutely. Okay. So, and if parents are unwilling to do that, then I mean, you almost have to twist people's arms to get them in church these days. Because everybody got too much stuff, you want to watch football on Sunday. Right. You know what I mean? So it's a matter of us developing priority. Now, our children should be number one Absolutely. on our priority list, but we all slip. And like I said, I like to take a drink here and there, and you know, children in my way, in my drink time. Right. I mean, I'm just saying this. Right. But we have to now bring the focus back in, put God number one, and then all that other stuff that we want to do for pleasure behind that because otherwise the children if, if, if we put God second we put our children way down the way down that we're provoking them right we are right. by right. not teaching them mm -hmm. well I call it instructing by right. not instructing mm -hmm. them mm -hmm. by not instructing and there are moments when people call them teaching moments there are moments when right. we can reach children but I believe now mm -hmm. it's gonna have, it's gonna like um, one of our former presidents said, it's not going to be easy. Right, right. Because we've allowed this, these demons mm -hmm. to come into our house. Mm -hmm. And to rid your house of the demons, it's mm -hmm. going to be a process. Right. It's going to be a process. And we, we are going to have to make a concerted effort to do this. Right. We just, like you say, we might not end up being friends with our children, right. but they're going to be saved. Right. They're going to have the knowledge of who God is, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and they're going to have an example. We have to commit to being the example mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. we want them to see. Mm -hmm. We have to commit to that. Right. And the way I see it, like I said, uh, I don't know the, the Bible, uh, Revelation is all about the end times and stuff. Like Christ talked about the end times, and when you see all these things happening, then you know this is a sign that we're close to the end of times. But if this is not close to whatever Christ was saying, you know, the, the level of violence that we see, the level of people going in schools shooting people. I mean, right. it's like the devil has been taken out of the box. There's no more barriers, you know, to confine evil. Well, how do we counteract evil? Are we powerful enough? God says what I put in you is stronger than what's in the world, but... That's what he says. Yeah. And that's what he means. Right. And that's the truth. So <laughs> we're dropping the ball. We're dropping the ball. Okay. God has not dropped the ball. Right. We've dropped the ball. Mm -hmm. I don't know where we, I don't know when it happened. Right. But I, 10 years ago, mm -hmm. before Barack Obama was elected president, mm -hmm. when he was running, mm -hmm. and I noticed that the bitterness and the meanness of people in this country was mm -hmm. coming out. Right. And I told my friend, um, one of the preachers that used to be at our church, I said, man, I'm starting, I'm going to go into a fast mm -hmm. for the African-American people because right. it seems like we're going backwards. That bitterness, yeah, I know. We're going backwards mm -hmm. because people are beginning to hate mm -hmm. outwardly, mm -hmm. just openly mm -hmm. hate mm -hmm. again. But now, man, it is not just African-American people, but they have collateralized almost all of humanity. Mm -hmm. Do you not know that 60% of the drinking water of mm -hmm. the earth mm -hmm. is no, I mean, 40% uh, is no good. We only wow. have 60% good drinking mm -hmm. water. Do you not know that the water that has been here since Noah mm -hmm. and the flood mm -hmm. are now unfit for human consumption? Due to us. Due to us. Mm -hmm. Something is wrong. So not only are we not good stewards of our children, we're not good stewards of Period. our habitation. Period. Of the uh, earth. Period. Well, that's what I'm saying. Somehow, and I, I, I don't know the answer, and you don't either, I don't think, but Somehow we have to go to first base. Yeah, it starts with God. Yeah. 
There you go. In fact, and you just answered that. my question before I even asked the question. Because yeah. I, I tend to lead on my understanding trying to fix things. And I don't think we're quite capable of doing it. And, and, and as I was saying, my opening scripture was going to be Romans 10. Mm -hmm. And that is that we have forsaken the knowledge. Mm -hmm. We have to get re we have to re acquire mm -hmm. the knowledge or refresh the knowledge and mm -hmm. then ask God to revive our spirits right. through this knowledge. Mm -hmm. and, and, and if we don't do this, it's going to be it's going to be really trying to push a rock up the hill on right. an oil slick, man. You know, and, and now that we've had this conversation, I'm becoming a little more focused too because the way you uh, tackle this problem is not going straight to the children. No, I don't have the expertise to do that. So I, I didn't understand what you meant at first, but now it's coming. I mean, we got to teach the teachers. We got to we got to try to try to get a point across to the parents. Right. Start spending at least two hours or three hours a week. Right. One with day children. with quality time mm -hmm. teaching them about what is right. If we say we are a country, they like to say right. Christian mm -hmm. nation. I say we need to become a nation of believers. Right. Believers. Mm -hmm. Faith based, mm -hmm. faith in Christ, not in anything else. We have to, God said, Jesus asked them, he said, what is the greatest commandment? Right. What is the greatest commandment? Right. That you will love the Lord thy God with, with all, all your, your heart. heart. With all your what? So. And with all, and your, all might. your might. That's what he said. Mm -hmm. But then he said, mm -hmm. the second is like unto the first. Right. Love one that another. That you love one another or your neighbor mm -hmm. as just. And that's where we dropped the ball. Mm -hmm. A lot of us say that we love God, but I don't love my neighbor. Right. I don't love my neighbor. Uh, you don't know what they, what I, I'm not asking. God didn't ask us what he was doing. Well, Don, we're uh, down to the last 30 seconds and we really? barely opened wow. our conversation. Would you mind sticking around for another episode? You got a little more juice in you that I can extract? <laughs> we can stay. We okay, can do it. Okay. We can do it. Let's All right, my brother. close this one down and we'll come All right. right back up. God bless. Okay? Mm -hmm. uh, we'll be back with another episode in just a minute. So what I'm going to do is turn it straight if you don't mind. Oh, you can't? Do well, I put this doing? one on. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, no I'm just kidding, man. No, I'm just messing with Don't listen to me. So you get some me. shots? Mm -hmm.